It's a Wednesday morning and welcome back to your feel-good breakfast here. Thanks so much for joining us at the start of a brand new day as we engage in some parenting talk and parenting advice. Now, as we can all imagine, it can't be easy living life with a, a mental difficulty. Uh, but how much more is it then when you have to raise a child with mental health difficulties? Uh, what strain does this put on a family and how can a family navigate their lives so as not to feel overwhelmed? Now, family therapist and registered social worker Kim Abrams joins us this morning in studio to talk about this mental illness awareness month to share her wisdom on the topic and we're very very grateful to have you here thank you Kim. for having me let's firstly maybe look at the the predominant issues that are found and that are diagnosed in children in terms of mental health mm. these days mental health is such an important topic that I don't think we speak often enough about especially mm. when it comes to children so as therapists we're seeing a real trend in children as young as three coming in with anxiety problems issues pertaining to depression and mm. when we're looking at older children especially in the teenage years we're seeing a real increase in young girls and and boys as well presenting with eating disorders yeah there's also across the whole broad spectrum of childhood development so from school age up until teen years we're seeing another increase in children being diagnosed with ADD and ADHD. Yeah, so yeah. There's, there's a real increase and it's obviously an issue that, that we need to start talking more about. And hopefully beginning to tackle at a far earlier stage um, from a preventative point of view so that you mm. don't have kids as young as three years old already displaying signs of, of anxiety. Uh, but as a parent, from a home perspective, what are some of those early signs that one can look out for that would probably probably indicate to you that your, your child might be undergoing some kind of mental strain or mental health strain that could lead to later problems? It's a really difficult question sometimes to answer when a parent's sitting mm. in front of you in terms of what to notice yeah. because there are certain behaviours for a child that's very much in line with their developmental needs. And unique to them as a person Absolutely, as well. absolutely. So for example we're in the school start of the new school term yeah. and so we're going to see children who are going to be anxious so mm. we might see an increase in tummy aches and headaches. So those are all things that we try to look at as being normal in terms of uh, an upcoming event. Yeah. But some of the issues where we kind of tend to raise red flags is if we're seeing a child persistently mm. displaying real changes in their behavior yeah. so as a parent I mean you know your child best so are they becoming a bit more withdrawn than what they usually are mm -hmm. or on the other side are they becoming more in aggressive or are their outbursts becoming a lot more frequent mm -hmm. we also start to look at the academic performance so how are they coping in daycare how are they coping in nursery or if they're of school age is, is there a, de a decline in their, in their overall academic performance and yeah. how they're engaging with their peers. Mm -hmm. But these are all things that we need to balance against what is in line with their, with their developmental yes. needs and also in line with perhaps there is something more that we need to be looking at. Yeah. So we're trying to look at persistent changes, so two weeks or more, really, if you're seeing these and it's time to perhaps start taking a bit more notice of it. Yeah. And now let's say you do take notice of it and it has been persistent, these red flags mm. are showing up and it's seeming like things are going awry. What are the steps that you as a parent can take? Because I think maybe the first thing you, you don't want to do is to freak out and have mm. your child in a panic state, I've noticed something is wrong right. with you and making them feel even more insecure about them that, that that's making them, you know, kind of back up into that corner right. a little bit more. You want them to open up, you want to have open-ended mm. conversations with your children so that they're able to allow their feelings to go and talk about Absolutely. them. So how do you do that? What are the first steps to take once you've noticed those red flags? Don't panic. Don't okay, panic. yeah, don't panic. Um, children learn what they live. So a lot of the time they will learn how to adapt and how to function to certain situations depending on how they see their primary caregivers doing it. Okay. So don't panic. There are certain things, as I've said, that children will naturally respond to and it might not be a mental health difficulty that they're dealing with. It might just be part of their development. Mm -hmm. But if you are worried, the first thing is seek help. There is help available. Your GP or your doctor might be the very first point of call you'd like to go to. So if you're seeing your child is perhaps presenting with increasing tummy aches and headaches, particularly if a certain event is coming up, Perhaps you want to take them to the doctor first mm -hmm. to first rule out anything medical or physical uh -huh. that might be an issue. Mm -hmm. Your doctor will then be in the best place to advise you further, perhaps seeking therapy or alternative forms of intervention to support your child. Yeah. So there is help available. I think the best thing to do for a parent is to speak up and say, 
you know, I, I'm worried and, and, and I need support. Yeah, yeah. And to say to your child, you know, I love you and the reason why I'm doing this is because I love you and I want you to be well. Absolutely. And, and I want the best for you. Um, really, really enlightening stuff and we do appreciate having you here. Thank and we look you. forward to continuing this conversation on the other side of a very, very short break as we address the issues of raising children with mental health difficulties. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. This is Expresso on SABC3. Thanks so much for being in our company at the start of a new day. Now, earlier on in the show this morning, family therapist and registered social worker Kim Abrams joined us on the couch to share some advice on what parents should do if they suspect that their child may be experiencing some or other kind of mental health difficulty and some of the signs to look out for. And we're continuing this conversation right now. Kim, thank you very much for, for being here. Let's talk about some of the stigmas that surround the community in the sense of their perception of mental health issues and how these ultimately then become a stumbling block and maybe a halt to families when they need to seek help. Mm, this is actually a really big problem that I face as, as a therapist in terms of parents feeling able mm. to speak up when they are worried. So the thing is, there are amazing parenting books out there yep. and amazing manuals, but there isn't a manual designed for your child. Mm -hmm. So I always say to parents, you know your child best. And you know, if you are worried, it's really important that, that you speak up. So some of the things that parents really struggle in terms of feeling like they can't speak up is because they are of often afraid of people labeling their parenting as being bad or yeah. they're not offering their child good enough care yeah. when that more than often is not the case because children are presented with various life events and traumas that perhaps have contributed to their to their mental health difficulties yeah. another issue that parents face in terms of stigmas attached to expressing their concerns around mental health is they w often want to avoid their child having a label attached when a child has a label attached it's very difficult for perhaps the school or those around the child to disconnect the child from the label mm. but it's really important to think of the problem as a problem and not the child as the problem yeah, yeah. because if we can externalize the issue and look at it for what it is it's it's sometimes a lot easier to go forward and seek the assistance that you need. Yeah, and perhaps then to curb society from giving these labels and you know mm. sometimes irremovably so. Um, let's talk about the challenges that are faced by parents that raise children with mental health difficulties. Take us within the home. What are some of the challenges that they face? A lot of the time, I think when you don't understand something, it, it becomes difficult in, to navigate yeah. it. So communication is, is a big issue that, that we're seeing within families. When a child is diagnosed with a mental health difficulty, some people respond differently towards it. So perhaps one parent will be more open in terms of seeking support and, and helping the child to understand. And perhaps the other parent or another caregiver will see it as just a phase that the child is going mm, through. Mm. So we all have different ways of understanding mental health. It's nothing new, but I think in terms of speaking about it more openly, it's becoming something yeah. that, that you know is, is new to us and we're all trying to develop our understanding around it. So the biggest challenges within the family unit is often a communication breakdown. Yeah. Children's self-esteem can rapidly deteriorate if if you know there isn't the right support in place and it just has a ripple effect yeah. so when a child isn't feeling supported or isn't feeling guided in order to understand their own difficulties that they're sitting with yeah it can become an issue if you could quickly sum up your best and final tips regarding this topic of raising a child with mental health difficulties what would those be I would say you know the mental health difficulty is something really difficult to deal with in yeah. itself but they are talents to every child play with your child find out what they are good at learn to see the positives in you in your child as well and, and talents in what they do mm -hmm. nurture that children's self-esteem will improve that way play with your child it's play therapy is an amazing tool i, I see it work every single day yeah. so spend time with your child get to know them outside of the problem that they are presenting with and just have fun with them excellent kim thank you very much for joining thank us we really you. do appreciate it we hope that you found the conversation very enlightening at home if you'd like to engage with kim and gain some more knowledge you can and visit her website www.kimabrams.com.